Hi, my name is Amy Collier, Senior Cloud Advocate at Microsoft, and I'm joined today with Sabine Blair, America's lead for Azure landing zones for the Azure VMware solution. Today, we're going to discuss one of the more commonly adopted networking patterns in the Azure landing zone accelerator, a traditional hub and spoke in Azure for connectivity to your Azure VMware private cloud. Take it away, Sabine. Sure thing. So today we'll break down each component of this design and we're going to link to all the information at the end so you can get started at any time. This session is really for anyone looking to have a better idea of how to design for hybrid. So stay tuned to the end to see how many, you know, are reducing their deployment times with our Azure Landing Zone Accelerator. So today's topics include centralizing routing in Azure, Azure Route Server, how one of Microsoft's newer network offerings plays a vital role in bringing the design together, options for accessing the internet for your AVS workloads, and express route to express route transit. Is that even possible? I guess we'll find out. And then we'll end off with a brief recap of everything covered today and take a peek at that landing zone accelerator and its most recent updates, which is the source of all the material you'll see presented here today. So back over to you, Sabine. Talk us through the drivers for this design and why is it so popular? Yeah, sure thing, Amy. And you know, let's think about it this way. Why do customers use this product called Azure VMware Solution in the first place? It's because many consumers of AVS do have the goal of keeping their workloads on the VMware hypervisor, but they have probably the end goal of going fully Azure native at some point in their cloud adoption journey. So they wanna land in Azure, so doing so would make sense to keep your actual infrastructure footprint dedicated to Azure. Yeah, I would think so. <laughs> right. And you know, many of our end users would agree with that. These are users that are looking to implement zero trust, um, migrate or modernize their workloads in Azure and establish hybrid cloud connectivity in their Azure landing zone. So, you know, where we commonly see this design is when the consumer of AVS has plans to, or may already have, you know, one centralized networking in place in Azure. So this is a consumer that might be looking to uh, extend their cloud platform over to the Azure VMware solution. And then number two, bring your own license or pay to go licensing for infrastructure such as network virtual appliances. Another use case, I'd say number three, centralized routing hub. So this is a use case that's often driven by security where that traffic needs to, you know, A, route through a centralized device, but B, it needs to be filtered and inspected. And this workload um, could be from AVS to AVS, or this could be internet traffic, or just traffic that's talking to, you know, across virtual networks in Azure. Okay, so let's say day one, I come to use AVS, and I have an on-premises or lab environment. How can I get started? Yeah, so let's say we have Amy's on-prem, Amy's sandbox, and you're connected uh, via VPN to Azure. That's the quickest, simplest way to have a connection um, from your environment over to Azure. And that connection is going to terminate on a VPN gateway. So this is what you'd see right here. If I just get the laser pointer up. So you're coming in and you're terminating on that VPN gateway. Now from AVS, as seen here on the right, you're gonna get an express route circuit. So that's what we're seeing right here. And with this express route, you're going to get a solution, you know, at no additional cost. So once you spin AVS up, you're going to have the express route circuit. Now, in order to access Azure, you're also going to have to create an express route gateway. So this one, to make it clear, is not a rate limited circuit. You're going to get pretty hefty throughput. However, when you do create this gateway, it's going to have different SKUs, right? So that's what's going to provide those different port speeds, whether it be one gigabit, 10 gigabits per second. There is a setting called fast path that comes with some of our ultra performance SKUs, and that's gonna allow you to bypass that altogether. But for this example, let's keep it simple. Amy Sandbox, AVS, one gig SKU. So going back to this diagram, I see here, you might want to go now and do this. So I can natively talk between those gateways today. Mm -hmm. And then this is really where we see Azure Route Server come in. Okay. So, um, and what Azure Route Server is going to do is it's going to use BGP to dynamically populate route tables in Azure. So with ARS, does this mean Azure and on-prem can see all the networks in AVS? Yes. 
essentially, because Express Route is speaking BGP, so Azure Route Server can dynamically learn any network in AVS and help send that traffic over to its destination. And then the great thing about it is that you don't have to manually create a route table entry every time a new network is created. ARS is going to take care of that. Oh, that's great. And then I do want to just call out some key things if you're going to use the virtual network gateway for, um, the, v um, for the VPN. Mm -hmm. So for the VPN configuration, firstly, has to be active active. That mode has to be enabled. So that's what you're seeing here on the left. Um, otherwise, if you don't have that enabled, you're going to have to redeploy that gateway. We don't want to do that. And secondly, when it comes down to Azure Route Server, that's not something that's going to work by default by giving you that branch to branch communication um, to speak to like other spokes and other networks. So that route propagation has to happen by hitting the switch right here, making sure it's enabled for that route to route propagation. All right, good to know. And then there are some other things to consider as well, such as maybe enabling BGP on your VPN gateway. But then if you enable VGP, there are some other considerations around, you know, ASN numbers, which one should be assigned. A few different default settings you may want to keep. So this is our public repo that has detailed step by steps that discuss these options. And you can view it by going to aks.ms forward slash AVS dash VPN dash ERGW. And that's going to take you over to our landing zone accelerator. OK, so keeping everything the same here, um, let's shift our focus to that internet access we talked about. How do we turn that on? Right. So we have two options here. Um, the word one that you see on the left is the managed SNAT, and then the public IP down to the NSX edge. And as you can see from the image on the left, managed SNAT Super straightforward, it's exactly what the name says, source network address translation. You hit a button, you have a route to the internet, boom. And then as the name also suggests, SNAT being that it's outbound only. So really we recommend this for you know testing and POC scenarios. Now, if you want something more robust, more scalable, this is where the public IP option comes into place. It's high bi-directional, it's more scalable, you can configure a lot more public IP address. And as you can see here, it has a dedicated internet edge. So that means that that traffic that's going out to the internet is not going to co-mingle with any traffic that's destined for on-prem or Azure via the AVS Express Route circuit. So we have flexibility here. You know, you can keep that centralized routing in Azure, but you can also have a dedicated path um, to the internet. This is probably good for you know low latent workloads, just a low latent path to um, from AVS to out to the internet. Okay. Um, then and also. also how would I go about going out securely to the internet? Mm. Yeah, that is that is the question, right? Um, <laughs> security is like a driver of everything. So right. with NXXT, uh, which is VMware's networking layer, you do have the opportunity to use IDS IPS. So that's that intrusion detection protection services. And honestly, you even have a few options when it comes to advertising a default route using a, a firewall in AVS or NXXT. But for the purpose of this video, I'm going to keep it short and simple. We're going to keep all these capabilities centralized in Azure. And that does mirror what we see many users of AVS doing today and really gets into the, the bread and butter, the heart of this design. Okay. Sounds good. So just looking at some of those settings are directly from the Azure portal. In AVS, you will have to tell it where you want to have that default route configured. Mm -hmm. So if we look at that image on the top left, Okay. We're going to see that um, we're not selecting the managed SNAP or the public IP options. We're hitting that first one that says, you know, we're going to have our own method for advertising that default route. And in this case, that would be that network virtual appliance that we have in Azure. And then next, looking over here at the bottom, we want to make sure that we have an express route connection um, from AVS to Azure in place in that hub VNet. And then just to ensure um, that this works, you're going to have to have a BGP capable appliance um, to Azure to peer with the Azure route server. And then from there, that NVA, you could have that quad zero. So it's just looking at how that looks right now. Okay. You can see that here with that BGP capable device peer to the Azure route server. Um, so at a minimum, uh, you can see this here, your hub virtual network, um, it should look like this. You should have an Azure route server um, it's going to be peered to that BGP capable device, and then you're going to have your gateway subnet at minimum. 
And then here in this diagram, you're gonna see that we call out some of the different things in play here, the different types of BGP. So you see that we have this IBGP going from Azure Route Server to the Gateway Subnet. That just means that they're gonna be assigned the same ASN number. So they know to keep that BGP internal. Okay. And then in terms of eBGP now, that connection simply means that your ASN for your device must be different. So your uh, firewall is going to have a different ASN from the Azure Route server. And I know you might be thinking now, well, how do I know what's what? Like, which ASN goes where? Right. Uh, well, we make that really easy for you. Um, for Azure Route server, you can't change it. <laughs> it's going to have <laughs> right. that ASN. It's yeah, it's going to have that. Yeah, it's going to have that ASN number of that 65515. And then for the VPN gateway, it's going to have that 65515 by default. So if it's changed, it's because you've changed it. So we do try to make this a little bit easier for you. <laughs> okay. And then right now I see two firewalls. How are we accounting for HA? So high availability, um, that can be a deep dive in itself, as there are many ways to design your NVAs, especially when it comes to high availability. So we'll likely have a separate video on that, but in short, the easiest thing to do um, is what you see here, which is taking this um, firewall NVA, we have two of them, so they're like appliances running on VMs, and now they're sitting behind an internal load balancer of type standard. So that network virtual appliance will then have a user-defined route that um, points to the load balancer. And we see this scenario in both multi-region and single-region um, architectures. And there is a method called next hop. And this is something that Azure Route Server um, natively supports. And it's it varies from firewall to firewall vendor. But for Azure Route Server, there's just no configuration changes that we need to make to utilize that. It's just ideally, you're going to tell your NVA where to send the traffic. And that next hop would be the IP of that internal load balancer. Okay. Yeah. So you can see from these images that um, you could approach this uh, scenario using both a VPN gateway and an express route gateway. And that's what we kind of see here on the right, where you're still able to um, have that peering with an NVA device if you have a VPN gateway also um, in that hub network. OK, so this scenario, you're using a VPN from on-premises, which would probably be more for the lab or the POC or intermediary until you get your express route connection in. Or even mm -hmm. you can use that um, as a backup to your express route. So have your yeah. express route to be the preferred connection from on-premises and then maybe VPN as a backup? Yeah, that's correct. That's uh, one of the recommendations that we make. Great. Um, so how hard is it to go from a VPN to express route only hub and spoke scenario? So VPN gateway, just for some background, the reason why we make that recommendation is mm -hmm. uh, because of the bandwidth, it is going to be capped based by this, uh, the SKU let's right. say like a 10 gigs. And that's really where that um, recommendation comes from. So just looking from the perspective of the express route, um, the main thing I want to mention here, which is very, very important, is that with the express route, you don't need to transit to Azure like at all. Uh, we have this method called global reach, and that's rec what's recommended. It's easy to enable. It's a direct low latent connection, and it's traversing over the Microsoft backbone. Um, so that's what you would use to basically go from one express route to another, just communicating um, between those two edges. Okay. Now, with that said, there is still a preferred route if you want to go to Azure itself, and that would be creating that express route connection. So that was something that we had mentioned before, where if you are coming from AVS, you hit that edge, you configure the express route connection, mm -hmm. and you still want to come down here directly. Um, we don't recommend hitting the edge, global reach, hitting the edge and coming out. Because ideally what you're doing is you're in Azure, you're leaving Azure, going over the background and, and coming back into Azure, right? So yeah. this is the recommended path if you're going from AVS to Azure directly. That makes a lot more sense. Mm -hmm. Stay in Azure. <laughs> yeah. And um, in our docs, we make it clear exactly which flows are covered in the scenario. So let's say, for example, you want to have something like end-to-end -end filtering. Mm -hmm. um, that should be done at either end of the global reach. So you could have a firewall here. So that means that that traffic is already inspected and filtered before it leaves. Or you could have that on-prem. That would be our recommendation for end-to-end -end traffic inspection. 
Um, right now, what we're covering in this scenario is the different traffic inspection flows uh, going mm -hmm. from Azure. So this would be filtered via the firewall NVA from AVS to the hub. The, the hub can also filter down to the spokes. It could filter to the internet. And then you could also filter your traffic from Azure to on-prem. Um, so this scenario is not for um, doing end-to-end -end traffic with a single NVA. I do want to highlight though, um, one of the more common questions that we get, which is, can you, um, you know, transit um, on a single express route gateway, meaning that this traffic here from on-prem is on this gateway, this mm -hmm. traffic from AVS is also on this express route gateway. And the answer is usually no, it's a <laughs> medium softish no. And there are some things that you could do such as super netting. So really collapsing your entire network into one um, big IP address space and there are some caveats with that. You're going to be heavily relying on user-defined routes um, to send that traffic where it needs to go. So that is something I would just say to do with careful consideration uh, if you do go down that route. Okay. Wow. Yeah, I wouldn't want to handle that network. But <laughs> yeah, um, you're, if you're like a, a customer or network, um, you have like a lot of just smaller networks in general that mm -hmm. you just want to keep small and segmented. I, I would not go down that route. If you only have a handful of networks in AVS, you could probably get away with that. Okay. So this is how it looks now when we put it all together. And to summarize, what are some of the key points when building this end to end that you want us to take away? Sure thing. Um, just looking maybe here. Uh, one of the key things that we want to highlight is that you want to use express route for maximum mm -hmm. bandwidth from on-prem but the VPN will work too if you do have those bandwidth constraints. And when using ExpressRoute, uh, use Global Reach to exchange those routes between the on-prem and the AVS. And it'll also use Azure Route Server and pair it with a BGP capable firewall if desired. And um, if you do want to bypass that, um, that gateway, then you would enable FastPath by having um, a higher SKU a gateway. What about the VNets themselves? For example, is that spoke traffic also filtered? That's a great question. So let me just uh, tackle that one. So in terms of the Azure VNets themselves, um, in the spoke, you want to hit this flag, you want to disable route propagation. Mm -hmm. And what that means is that um, you're no longer going to um, rely on Azure peering because what happens is that traffic can natively bypass the firewall. Um, that is the native behavior with Azure peering to go directly to the gateway of the peer network. Okay. So by enabling this now, you're bringing the firewall into the equation and you'd have that return traffic um, go back now by using a UDR and you just make the next hop uh, be that um, IP address of the NVA. And then in the hub itself, um, in the gateway subnet, you're gonna create a UDR for that spoke VNet um, with a next hop of the NVA. And then just in terms of some of the peering between the hub and spoke, mm -hmm. uh, so if that spoke needs to talk back to on-prem, you just wanna make sure that you're enabling a selling call um, remote gateway. Okay. So when you enable that for the hub, this will have the spoke VNet network uh, advertised via express route on the hub. And then if you do need to go multi-region, uh, you would just enable global peering between those two hubs. So. Um, that's kind of the scenario in a nutshell. All right. And just even in terms of that multi-region guidance, mm -hmm. um, we have a lot of, you know, information, design principles, and that's some of the latest additions to our GitHub repo. So please visit it. There's a lot of great information there. There's white papers. We really deep dive into some of those hybrid connectivity scenarios. So those are just some of the links that we have listed here is case of the AKA MS, go to AVS dual region, and then also AKA.MS AVS design basics. Great. So my last question, towards the end, we bring up using that VWAN hub with a customer managed WAN. Are there other reasons to go with the VWAN topology? That's, that's another great question. And it's also like a top five hit when it comes to questions. <laughs> um, so I think it's important to emphasize sometimes the use case a little bit more than the tool. And the reason I say that is because Hub and Spoke and Azure VLAN, in theory, they're solving the same use cases discussed earlier. 
So there are some key differences when it comes to how VWAN is going to handle these use cases. Mm. The first one being that Azure VWAN is managed. So that transitivity, the express route to VPN, to a WAN, uh, to AVS is built in without the need for spinning up an uh, Azure route server. So that's the first thing. And then natively, you can use Azure Firewall. So that's you know another strong selling point because Azure Firewall today does not speak BGP, which is why you saw earlier we were using that BGP capable. NVA kept saying BGP capable. <laughs> um, so the use case for Azure Firewall is um, a you know a really strong use case um, for Azure VLAN. But of course, you could use an NVA there as well. Just look at make sure some of those recommendations for using NVAs with the VLAN. And um, another thing with that secure VLAN does have more of an upfront cost, especially when you talk about, you know, Azure Firewall or, you know, tacking on an NVA. However, a hub and spoke is going to have a more variable cost. So if you go from a simple hub and spoke topology to a, you know, a mesh hub and spoke topology to a multi-region hub and spoke topology, you could see how that cost would go up. Okay. Um, but long story short, to answer your question, it's it's a design preference. Um, if you're comfortable managing your networks and, you know, your user-defined routes and stuff like that, then, you know, absolutely go hub and spoke. Um, but if, you know, you're thinking that you have like, you know, 20 or so branch offices and, you know, heaps of express routes and VPNs, this might be an attractive um, look as well. So we do have step-by-step -step guidance for anyone that wants to go um, down that route. Okay. And you mentioned global reach. What if I'm in a region without having accessibility to global reach? If you don't have global reach, there's some things that you can do in your hub and spoke um, environment. Um, there's some routes that you could configure, you know, between um, NVAs and using that as a router. Uh, another option that you could look at is secure VLAN hub, where there's the route intent, and that can filter between two secure hubs using the Azure Firewall. Okay. Um, so those are just some options there as well. Great. So we covered a lot of ground here today, and I'm going to try to recap it. We covered connectivity from on-premises with either a customer WAN VPN connection or customer purchase express route because you mm -hmm. get an express route with your ABS solution. Mm -hmm. um, we described how to use a BGP capable firewall for default route advertisement and centralizing routing by peering it with Azure Route Server or ARS. And then we also showed ARS using ARS for transit between express route and that VPN gateway. Then we disabled route propagation to steer return traffic into peer VNets back through the firewall. And then best practice was to note your traffic flows, what needs to route where, which routes need to be secure, and which routes need to talk to the internet. Yeah, exactly. You did a great job, Amy. <laughs> Thanks for capturing all of that. And you know, we not gonna just like leave this to chance. You can find all this information and more in our landing zone accelerator. So this GitHub also hosts um, the landing accelerator code, where you can find um, you know, code such as uh, Terraform, uh, Bicep, uh, Azure Portal Experience to really help you get this up and going based on the, some of the common patterns that we've seen. And we're only touching the tip of the iceberg here. There are so many things to consider when it comes to routing, not just for AVS, but you know, Azure in general. So please see our network design page with in-depth white papers so that you have the information that you need to make a really informed decision. And just for the latest information on the product, you know, always go back to the Azure VMware solution product page. Um, you know, that's always being updated frequently. Um, you know, you drive a lot of these requirements. So we're always looking there to just see some of the latest network design considerations, just so from additional coverage on that hub and spoke architecture um, design patterns that we referenced today. Okay, well, thank you so much for this thorough explanation, not only of the design, but giving kind of a clearer picture of some of the components to look for when you're building your AVS landing zone. So please be sure to check out some of our get started guides here in the GitHub repo as that Sabine pointed out. Thanks for joining me, Sabine. Oh, anytime. Thank you for having me, Amy. Oh, no problem. <laughs> Take care.